Bayonet Charge by Ted Hughes. Well, this is about, as it says in the title, a bayonet charge, when soldiers would run headlong with bayonets, very, very sharp swords, effectively, fixed to the front of their rifles, and they're charging at the enemy. Presumably here they're charging at an enemy that are hidden in a line of vegetation, in bushes and trees. The repeated idea here is the terror and the horror of being in a conflict, but also perhaps the effect that this is having on the surroundings, the effect that this is having in particular on the nature that surround there. We have this awful description of the yellow hair that rolled like a flame and it crawls and it's just frenzy because it's been caught up in this in this conflict. So the tone here, well confusion I think more than anything, the tone is, there's, there's a great deal of confusion there and, and as I said before, horror and terror that when the conflict actually kicks off, when there's this intense moment, it almost seems that the tone reflects this sort of slowing down, almost in the sense that the whole of time slows down because what's happening is so horrendous. And the adrenaline has kicked in, perhaps. Individual words. Well, we've got a lot here. I mean, we've got dazzled, smacking, sweating. For me, the most important word, or one of the most important words, is in line eight. It's sweating like molten iron from the centre of his chest. Molten iron. Iron is one of the hardest metals in, on the planet and you have to heat it to a super hot temperature in order to melt it. The idea that we have a molten iron, it evokes really the ferocity of this conflict and also perhaps the intensity of it as well. Molten iron as well perhaps has connotations of the actual bullet that's whizzing through the air and literally would be turned almost molten with the power of it being forced from the gun. So alliteration. Not a great deal, although there are touches in line 10 in what cold clockwork of the stars and nations. If anything, you should look for any line, any alliteration here that supports this idea of this conflict and, as I say, the nature of the conflict, this sudden and ferocious conflict that we have here. So, rhyme and rhythm. Well, we have another poem here that's written, really, in prose. There's not so much of a rhythm. In fact, there's an absence of rhythm. And really, I think that reflects the truly chaotic nature of this poem. This is a poem not about order, not about rhythm, but a pure chaos. This horrible, sort of wild, hectic description of what actually happens when conflict kicks off. And then structure. Well, we have three stanzas. They are fairly regular. The punctuation here, I think, is key for the structure. If we have a look at stanza one, we've got this description of the soldier walking. And we have lots and lots of dashes. I can't look at three. One, two, three. Actually, it's only three, but they have a, a, an interesting effect. This sort of quite a disjointed narrative, which maybe you could relate to the disjointed sort of emotions that this man might be feeling. Incidentally, Ted Hughes is our poet in this sense, and he was renowned for creating poems which were very much focused on nature and the natural world. I think, if anything, our narrator here, by reflecting conflict that is in nature gives this quite an unusual sort of position in the anthology. Do tune in for the next video because I'm going to be talking about hawk roosting which is also by Ted Hughes and in some ways evokes similar ideas about nature. Okay, bye bye.